first of two semifinal games on this Saturday in Philadelphia about to get started. Matty Palem is our head official. Naso and Chase Mullins, the North Carolina transfer, and Duke wins the opening faceoff. The Blue Devils on offense led by one of the most potent attacks in the country. Andrew McAdory, two and white, carries, streaking to the cage, misses wide, and he was in the crease. It'll be Penn State ball. It's McAdory, the aforementioned O'Neill, and Dyson Williams, an ace finisher on the inside for Duke. Penn State now will clear. They'll get their first go on offense. It's a Nittany Lions offense led by T.J. Malone, as Quint told you, the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. Jack Trainer, 16 in blue, the leading goal scorer for Penn State coming into this tournament. He's been banged up. In goal for Duke, the Kaiser, William Helm, a transfer from Division Three St. Lawrence. Here is Malone. Kenny Brower stick checks it loose. And Duke's defense with the first big stop. Round one to Kenny Brower. The lefty veteran. He has stood toe to toe with the best in the ACC this season. We got an equipment malfunction there. That's not a broken stick. The head just popped off. He'll have to get that screwed back and get that matchup with T.J. Malone, who is their quarterback, and Brower has been an absolute eraser this season. Brower, a first-team All-American. Penn State creating a little congestion in the middle of the field, and Helm able to get it across to Jake Caputo. This Duke attack, good for 12 goals in the quarterfinals. O'Neal had six, the other two attackmen had a hat trick, and here is O'Neal against Kevin Parnham. Penn State opening this game in a man-to-man -man defense. They'll play some zone, but without Jack Posey, their best defender, all, everyone else is in the wrong seat on the bus, so to speak. Garrett Ledman now on the doorstep, and Duke strikes first. Dyson Williams, his 58th goal of the season, 1-0 Blue Devils. Watch the head of the stick. A little twister action by Dyson Williams, who's been automatic. You think about O'Neal, the growth in his passing game. Andrew McAdory, the firecracker of a Dodger. Dyson Williams was born to finish. Garrett Ledman, one in white, does a nice job right there, drawing the double team. Jeff Tambroni, Penn State's head coach, said if we are man, we're going to have to move, we're going to have to slide, we're going to have to help. Well, they were late in their recovery. The nice ball reversal by Duke. Dyson Williams with the layup. You mentioned Jack Posey, senior captain, All-American, injured his leg in the quarterfinal win against Army for Penn State. He was on crutches yesterday. And Duke, after the goal, wins the faceoff. Posey was the guy who was going to draw that O'Neill assignment, and everybody would have been in their places. But now, everyone's got to bump up one. and changes the matchups in issue. And for Duke, they expect a lot of zone today. Penn State still in a man-to-man. -man. Tommy Schelling, 31 in white for Duke. Part of the second midfield, a Lehigh transfer. Schelling has come on late in the season. Owen Caputo now. His dad, Ron, the defensive coordinator for Duke. Behind the cage, Brennan O'Neill turns the corner. Caputo dodging against Kyle Aldridge. Gives it up, shot from the wing. It's knocked down and saved by Frassian. He makes a ton of saves with his legs and body. Jack Frassian, the sophomore from Bullis. Jack. 
Penn State now getting its personnel on. Ethan Long, 20 in blue. One of the heroes of the round one comeback against Princeton with five goals, a career high. Here's Winkoff. He loves that sweep to the middle to the right hand. 48 in blue. The Binghamton transfer. Now Malone. Through the contact. Malone's got a short stick matchup. He isolates Aiden McGuire. Feeding. Shot to Mercer. Is behind the cage. A little too high. Closest to the ball when it goes out of bounds. Awarded possession off a shot. So it stays with Penn State. And Long gives it up with Wilson Stevenson shadowing him. Shot clock down to 13. Here's Jack Trainer. Now Mercer. Shot clock into single digits. Winkoff. Long. Penn State ties it up. You feel this arena is packed with Nittany Lions fans. This ball hits the post. And then the goalie, Frassian. We see it from the great angle there. So Penn State catches a break. They love to spin the rock. When you watch this team throughout the season, one of the main reasons they went from three wins to triple their regular season total to nine was the ball movement and the crease play. When you watch Penn State, their ability to feed inside on the high crease defines their ball movement and their offense. Yeah. Long down the stretch. Multiple goals in four of his previous five games. A Penn State team that in 2019 reached championship weekend for the first time here in Philadelphia. They were ambushed in the first quarter by Yale as we get a faceoff violation against Penn State. 2020 Penn State goes into the season as the preseason number one. COVID hits, and then the program over the next two years plummeted from Penthouse to Gulags. 3-11 and last year. T.J. Malone healthy this year. Jack Trainer healthy this year. And it's been a redemption song in 2023. That team in 19 had star power on offense. Grant Amen, Mac O'Keefe. This defense, this team known for their grit, their competitive grit. They've improved their defense radically from a year ago by over three goals per game. We're seeing zone for the first time from Penn State. Car how does Duke want to attack? Well, you have the perimeter shooters with O'Neal. There's Balsamo weaving inside and scores. The freshman, Charlie Balsamo, with a machete through that Penn State defense. You want to talk about grit. Charles Balsamo brings grit every single time he steps on the field. Five foot nine, a top recruit at the attack position because they were a little light offensively from the midfield. They bump him up. But when you watch his goal production this season, it's the ability to get to the middle of the field, soak contact, and finish the rock. When you talk about zone offense, Matt Danowski, offensive coordinator at Duke, said, we need to press the seams. That is, draw two men. Balsamo does that. He sniffs that out, and he's between the two defenders and senses that there's not sufficient contact there, and he takes it to pay dirt. It's his first goal of this NCAA tournament, and Duke four for four on faceoffs. And this is where Duke can be dangerous. They can play make it, take it because of Jake Naso at the X. Owen Caputo. Now it's McAdory. Last year he set the Duke freshman record for midfield scoring. Move to attack this year. Former number one overall recruit. A turnover, here's Aldridge. Penn State's got two-way middies. Aldridge is one of them. Feeds the wing. Now back to X. And Duke able to get back defensively. Now Penn State using the sub game. Winkoff.
Both teams have their personnel on. Winkoff goes to work against the long stick Keith Boyer. We'll see his brother Jose later today when Notre Dame plays Virginia. Look at that D. Charlie O'Connor all over his man. A flag is down. And a delayed penalty coming on Duke. Winkoff sweeps to the middle. He scored the game-winning goal in each of Penn State's first two NCAA tournament wins. And he has assisted on both of Penn State's two goals today. We're all even at two. Concern for head coach John Donowski. Physical defense on the perimeter by O'Connor. He just steps over the line a little bit. Duke loves to press out early in games. And now with a flag down, Penn State takes a chance, Kark. They do, Quinton. When you turn on the tape, Winkoff, the last two NCAA tournament games, he's been a dodger, a scorer from up top, sweeping with an absolute cannon of a shot. So Duke is concerned about his ability to stretch. How does he counter? With the pass. Winkoff to T.J. Malone. Kevin Winkoff, a 70-goal scorer in his career at Binghamton. Jeff Tambroni had resisted the transfer portal the last few years when other teams were diving in. He changed his M.O. this offseason. Yeah. All right, let's yeah. go. Like, when, like when Maryland and Rutgers are stomping on you with all, a lineup of transfers, uh, dial up the portal. First face-off win for Penn State. If you're watching this game, you get a sense of, of what the identity of this Penn State team is. It's their grit. It's their competitiveness. They take care of the vanilla, the basic plays, and they're willing to play the full 60. Nittany Lions drawing even at two apiece. They've got the extra man advantage. 8.15 to go. Quarter number one, semifinal number one. The Duke Blue Devils chasing a fourth national championship in program history. 2010, C.J. Costabile, the overtime winner, a storybook ending for the Blue Devils. 2013, it was Brendan Fowler winning every faceoff after a slow start. Duke rallied to Amtrak Syracuse. And then 2014, Jordan Wolf, the closer in the win against Notre Dame, 11 to nine. John Donowski, the winningest coach in the history of Division I lacrosse, 12 NCAA semifinals since he took over at Duke. The Blue Devils have been a fixture on this stage. More than 40 years and 400 wins. He started as an educator at the high school level, a teacher and a coach. And you feel that when you spend time with this Duke team. He is a true teacher using lacrosse as his classroom. Man up opportunity. Helm comes up with his first save. It'll stay with Penn State and TJ Malone. Heavy dose of Malone here, Anisha. I was in the Penn State offensive huddle, and Jack Trainer's on the sideline already. We know he has an upper body injury. He started the game. He's on the sideline. He's the team's leading scorer, but Malone is the quarterback, the facilitator, and the decision maker. Skip pass to the wing. Big time velocity from the perimeter. Luke Big time. Mercer. One of the things Malone told us yesterday. He likes initiating from up top, especially that high wing. That was 106 miles per hour. I hope he took the over, Kark. I said it was 104 last night. Time and room changes everything when you plant your feet, Quint. On the doorstep in Penn State with its first lead of this semifinal. Not all face-offs are created equal. And Penn State's struggling in that department. But guess what? You got the man up face off. Hudson Bond from Orlando comes in for that draw. They muck it up. They have the extra man on the wing and they call timeout. I'll tell you what, the shot prior to this goal by Luke Mercer that was humming at 106 miles an hour made the Duke man down defense think that you have to protect the perimeter. What's open? The inside in the slam dunk. Jeb Brenfleck, who started on attack last year when Penn State had a litany of injuries on offense and the assist again, Quint, by Winkoff, who now has three. Brenfleck, a legacy. Down. 
Cooks. His mom, three aunts, and two uncles all went to Penn State. Duke in round one survived Dela Delaware. And then in the quarterfinals, vaporized Michigan. Penn State needed a comeback to beat Princeton in round one. Down 7-1 in that game. Knocked off Army, outlasting the Black Knights in Annapolis last week. I think this is the start, if you're Jeff Tambroni or a Nittany Lion, not Lion fan, that you were hoping for. Your team's ready to play. Standing toe-to-toe -to -toe okay. with the Blue Devils. Here's Ledman, a PLL draft pick. Left hand misses the mark. You know what I like about this defense, gentlemen, by Penn State? A mixture of man and zone, every possession. O'Neal with a lefty! Goliath online. Without Jack Posey, Paul, they're going to have to mix and match defenses, play some man. They're going to have to support this O'Neal matchup. You see Coach Dan Broney, we, we spoke about it yesterday. They just don't have a cover man for O'Neal. Look at him. The combination of power and speed, he creates separation, and he's got a hammer, lefty three-quarter arm with the bouncer. He can be unstoppable. When you give him that kind of room, the momentum, the head of steam, he becomes unguardable. That's why Chris Fake from Notre Dame has had some success. He was the aggressor. He initiated the contact. Last week against Michigan, they gave him that five, six yard cushion when he was dodging. Good night, six goals. So from everything we've seen, Clark, the hurdles for Penn State in this game are face-offs and covering O'Neal. Mullins getting help from the wing, and Mark Sickler, 32 in blue. Sickler playing as a two-way midi this year, an offensive midi the last two years. This is a Duke team loaded with All-Americans, four of their top six on offense. Three of their long poles received All-America honors. Most improved in the defensive midfield unit. A young group. Trainer lost it. The takeaway by Wilson Stevenson. In 2019, he suffered a devastating leg injury in the quarterfinals. And when Duke was playing on this field for championship weekend in 2019, he was FaceTiming his teammates from a hospital. O'Neal with a lefty laser in the backup to Duke and Dyson Williams. This is Tommy Schelling, top 10 scorer at Lehigh, and they like him on the invert. He was an attackman at Lehigh. The sub game going on here with Duke, playing this five on five in the offensive set. mcadory has got a short stick. He'll try to use his speed. Turns the corner, denied top side. Still plenty of time to shoot. Williams shot, save, Frassian. Rebound loose in front. And a loose ball push against Duke, Penn State ball. Best stop of the day. Frassian moving his feet side to side, covering the net. And that was an interesting tactical flurry there because uh, Penn State ran a man off and Duke had the momentary six on five. Shot clock never reset. Winkoff has assisted on all three Penn State goals. Duke pressing out far on Winkoff with Boyer. There's the sweeper, now Matt Trainer, Penn State's top scoring midfielder. Younger brother of Jack Trainer, Frizzoli denies him. Shot on the run by Matt Costin. 4-3 Penn State.
Frassian's a flatliner. Off the left knee, rebound control for the Nittany Lions. At the other end, Kark, what do you see? I see a right-handed player in Matt Costin being told, I dare you to go left. And what he does, he shows you some versatility. Spent his first year at Utah for Coach Brian Holman and the Utes transferred back to his home state. He crushes one. Right into your living room, huh? How about that angle? That is super cool. And you see how these goalies are tested from 10 yards and in, how fast that ball's on top of them. The one thing Penn State has this weekend, Philadelphia, the home to a very large Penn State alumni base. They might be the underdog, but they're the home team as well. Tyler Carpenter to McAdory can do, turn chaos into opportunity. O'Neal, left hand free, does it again. More than three quarters of his goals are unassisted. Kark, sometimes it's as simple as give the ball to 34 and tell him go. Look, from a size, speed, skill, and strength standpoint, and I'm not saying he's the GOAT Gary Gate, and I never will, but I haven't seen someone this big, fast and strong with the skill and the snap of the release like this. This is crazy. This is unguardable. He's too big, he's too fast, he's too strong, and he's too accurate of a shooter, Quint. That's 90 plus on the run while being covered, okay? He's the fastest Duke player ever to 100 goals. When he was in eighth grade, he verbaled Penn State. Okay, this was a guy, I remember watching highlights of him. We covered him in the World Series of Lacrosse, actually, in Denver, Joe Beninati, when he was 13. I remember looking at him like, oh my gosh, what is this? Well. He's gotten faster, actually. He was always a monster. He was always mammoth. But he's gotten faster and quicker. And man, he has worked on his game. He's something else. And I think he's picking this tournament this year to say, hey, I've arrived big time. Two years ago, the ACC Freshman of the Year, an All-American last season, and perhaps the Tawarton winner this year. This stings. This stings right here. Offsides on Penn State. Duke unsettled the other way. McAdory pulls it back. Checked by Alex Ross, the freshman. Tonight, game five of the Western Conference Final for you. Eight Eastern on ABC and ESPN Plus. Stars and the Golden Knights of Las Vegas. Charlie Balsamo now. Over to Ledman, little fake. Marked by Sam Sweeney. Ledman three for 20 shooting in his last five games. Denenza now snakes back around. Ledman from up top with a blast. for Duke. Announcer Jinx, Ledman is a streaky shooter. Started the season in a little bit of a slump, and then, man, weeks three, four, five, he took off. He was one of the best players that I saw on tape. This is a guy who played D midi last year, Kark, and now he's a full-time midi. He's gonna get a shot in the Premier Lacrosse League as a two-way guy. Well, his experience a year ago on the other end will pay dividends, but he has the biggest weekend of his life right now to deal with. I'll tell you what, if Penn State decides to go zone, Ledman can stretch from the far right. O'Neal to the left could be problems. Perfection of that shot. I mean, that's within a ball or two of that offside low post. We'll see him next week for the Whip Snakes, third round pick in the PLL draft. Another face-off won by Duke. Just off the mark. That's Jack Gray, the defensive midfield. Gray, McGuire, O'Connor, Jake Caputo has been a huge strength for Duke this season. Two minutes to go in a high-scoring first quarter. 
O'Neal's got two goals. Man-to-man -man defense from Penn State. Caputo now inverts. Schelling pumps the brakes. Now attacks down the alley. Spins it back to X and O'Neal. Kevin Parnham against O'Neal. Those checks do nothing. Schelling turns, fires, scores. He's not a one-trick pony. I'll tell you that much. Everyone's probably watching saying you have to stop O'Neal as a goal scorer. But this season, his passing has been incredible. Over 40 assists. And he knows the slide is coming so quickly, Quint. Schelling's been a major upgrade, especially late in the season. He flashes underneath. His man takes the wrong way around the crease. And Schelling catches this and finishes. The former attackman at Lehigh. He's looked really good in the last three weeks. Kark, it's been an adjustment for Schelling. He was a primary ball carrier at Lehigh. The ex-attackman, you're playing second midfield for Duke. It took him about a half season really to find his role, but he's been a big playmaker down the stretch on that second midfield unit. And it should. When you have the ball in your stick and you're behind the cage like T.J. Malone, you're the quarterback, then you're asked for the first time to play an off-ball midfield type role. The things change. O'Neal Dyson Williams, Fratzian with his biggest save of the game. 51 rarely misses, rarely misses from that close. Tell you, a lot going on in that faceoff. Penn State wins the initial draw, turns it over. Duke goes for the jugular right away in transition, but Frassian, I, I talked about his instincts. He habitually makes these incredible saves. There's no wasted movement. He trusts his intuition. Watch his top hand. Drives it across, moves his feet. He's got great balance. Reminds me of kind of a bullfighter, a matador, the way he moves between the pipes. Jake Morin, up top, wink off, behind the back pass, sloppy on the ground. Boyer trying to vacuum it, it hits the ref. And it comes back to Penn State, Morin. Now Malone, wink off from long distance, easy save for Helm. Final 15 seconds here in quarter number one. Little ride by Penn State to slow Duke up. Blue Devils have to get it across midfield before the first 20 seconds elapse on the shot clock. That is irrelevant with the time, and quarter number one comes to an end. We saw four ties. We saw two lead changes. We saw 10 goals in the first quarter of the first semifinal game. Duke, the number one seed, leading Penn State by two. Philadelphia home to championship weekend for the first time since 2019. That was the last time Penn State got the championship weekend. It was their only time. The Nittany Lions in round one were down 7-1 to Princeton, then mounted a comeback, went to his own defense. Kevin Winkoff tallied the game winner for the quarterfinals. Indianapolis, Penn State jumped out in front of Army, then held off a furious Black Knights comeback. This is a team Three wins a year ago. Jeff Tamboni is the architect, making his fifth trip to championship weekend as the head man. Remember, he led Cornell to three championship weekends. There you see the former attackman for Hobart, West Genesee product, okay? The roots are, are through Mike Messer and toughness. Jeff recruits toughness. I, I remember when I was an assistant coach at a high school level, he'd come in and he goes, I know who your good players are. I want your toughest guys. And that's the identity of this team. Tell you what, these guys are not flinching. They're not going to back down. We saw them yesterday in practice too, gentlemen. Like, there's no flinching in this team. This is a tough team that trains as hard, if not harder, than any team in the country. Kark, I think the two challenges after that first quarter, face-offs and guarding Brennan O'Neill. They can scheme up as much as they can to, to stop O'Neal. I think the face-offs are harder to fix, ultimately. Yeah, there's also phases to this offense, and Matt Donowski, the offensive coordinator for Duke, just told me they're hitting Penn State in phases because they don't want Penn State to set up in the zone right away. 
Duke has won eight of the 12 faceoffs. O'Neill two goals and an assist in the opening quarter. Zone defense here. First midfield on. Balsamo, Denenza, Ledman for Duke. Williams, now O'Neill. Charging toward the cage, the backup to Dyson Williams, 21 to shoot. That's fine on offense. Again, press the seam, draw two men. You'll watch Duke, they'll start with one player on the inside, and then they'll bump somebody else inside. Penn State's got to respect the guys on the crease. Talking to Brendan O'Neill, he said, I need to find a three on two, Anish. That is, what side of the field does Duke have a, you know, the three on two man advantage? Shot clock at two. Ledman's got to shoot it. He does. Frassian, the save. Parnum gobbles up the rebound. Sickler the other way. That's the best the zones look today. Our second semifinal, Notre Dame and Virginia. The ACC has been a flat circle this year. Duke has owned Virginia. Virginia has owned Notre Dame. And Notre Dame got the better of Duke in their lone matchup. Jack! Malone picked up by Boyer, or rather Brower. Illegal pick, Duke ball. Margin of error for the Nittany Lions in this game is slim. The pick rules in lacrosse are almost identical to basketball. You've got to be stationary, feet shoulder width, and you can't use your lacrosse stick to gain an advantage. 44. Here comes McAdory, back-to-back -back hat tricks in this NCAA tournament. Schelling setting the pick. Duke playing five on five here in niche with that sub game. They're just holding the player out in the hangman position, top right of the box. Question mark. Shelling against Costin. You're going. McAdory. Now back to Shelling. Turns the corner. Good slide. Comes back up top. O'Neill with a hammer. Frassi on the save. Rebound. Dyson Williams goal. It's a tough pill to swallow, Quinn. Frassian knows some tendencies from O'Neill, who likes to shoot to the opposite pipe. Frassion makes an incredible first stop, but that's the last guy you want picking up the change. A lot going on in this, it's a five on five situation. You see only five defenders for Penn State, meaning more space for Duke. Hammer time for O'Neill, man. Frassion takes that where you never want to take it. Watch this, boom, right in the chest. But Dyson, the Canadian indoor player, gets that inside position. Rebounds have been big in this NCAA tournament. Look at him react. He's a step ahead and gets there first. Something to watch this weekend, Kark, too. How this turf plays. Yesterday, a lot of the guys were talking how there was very little bounce off the surface. Bounce shots might be a no-go. They won't be a go at all. You saw O'Neal there. Sometimes he actually bounces to that opposite pipe. Just a lower type shot. But when you defend Dyson Williams on the crease, you have to defend him off of rebounds, almost like you're shutting him on the crease, like he's the biggest concern in the world because he picks up every single one of those and makes it count. The key word is custody. You've got to own custody of 51 inside. You mentioned the field, Anisha, but near the surface, it's really fast to run on and compact, but for whatever reason, we were bouncing a ball yesterday. The ball just dies, so you're not going to see high bouncers above the goalie's waist. Malone looking for the crease feed. It's not there. Stevenson ahead to Aiden McGuire. McGuire's dangerous. 
That's where Duke's really upgraded this team this year. They're clearing, scoring more in transition. The connectivity between the D and the O is better. Ledman spins back to the middle. Loads up, save Frassi, and again with the body. Six saves for the goalkeeper from Annapolis. Aldridge now. Here's Chris Jordan. Shoots wide. That's Jordan, a Division III transfer from St. Lawrence, shooting on his old goalie from St. Lawrence, William Helm. That one stung Frassian. He's down on the turf right now, taking a knee. His goalies wear chest protectors, helmet, gloves, not much else. Ready. Shot and a score from Penn State. Jack Trainer, a little bruised and banged up, gets on the board for Penn State. When I was a young goalie, I got padded up big time. Shin guards, arm guards. But as you advance up, the shooters get better. You rarely get pegged in the shoulders, the arms, and the legs because guys are hitting corners. Well, Jack Frassian pays the price there, man. He takes that one to the body. He'll take that every single time, Quinn. When on the other end, the emotional leader has been banged up all playoffs long. Jack Trainer, when he caught that ball, I said, this was the test. Can he shoot with that upper body injury? Well, there's your answer. Trainer, the last two years, his Penn State career checkered by injuries. Last year, he had a hamstring. He was dealing with immense pain in his shins. He found out he had compartment syndrome. It's a painful condition where there's too much pressure within the muscles. They actually had to cut his legs open to alleviate the pressure. He's come back this year, and he's been one of the top goal scorers in the Big Ten. Matt Trainer, Jack's younger brother, against Frizzoli. Moore slides to the win. Shot to score. That's Matt Trainer getting on the board. And Penn State with it one. We are the home team. The local boy. His brother scores. Goal number five, he answers with six. And look at the placement on this shot on the righty goalie. Time win, it just hugs that puck. Starts with belief. Fortified by execution. I love how aggressive Penn State's now playing in half field sets. When Duke presses out, so what? They've got their shoulders facing towards the goal in attack mode. They're not running away from Blue Devil defenders. Two goals in 43 seconds. Q, Penn State at full strength was a massive underdog in this game. Jack Trainer not close to 100%. The best defender, Jack Posey, out. They're still toe-to-toe -to -toe with Duke. Still a lot of time left, but they have yet to back down. Competitive grit is what they do. It's, it's what Jeff Tambroni has always delivered as a coach, leading Cornell to three championship weekends. This group's not gonna jump off the page at you in terms of the recruiting rankings, but he develops players, they play team ball, they make the simple plays, and they're willing to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and fight you for 60 minutes. Zone defense from Penn State. Duke puts two men on the inside now. Duke so far navigating the perimeter. Denenza, tough angle shot. See how that ball just died. We get a loose ball push against Penn State. So Duke ball, and the shot clock resets to 60. So Duke, Duke goes with two interior players. 
Penn State's got to respect that, okay? You can't cover two guys inside with one, so you have to match up, meaning then it becomes a four-man perimeter for Penn State, which makes your, your real estate you've got to cover, the area you've got to cover in your zone bigger. They're bigger spacings between defensive players. Denenza flips it back to O'Neal. Up top, Ledman. Nice face dodge, lefty, got it! I thought he was shooting this ball with his right hand. Ledman rarely does this slick underneath move to go to his weak spot. Changes positions, becomes a lethal goal scorer with his right hand. Well, it's championship weekend. Unload the toolbox, Ledman. Bill Tierney, Matt Ward, out of championships in Bristol right now. John Donowski used to be Bill Tierney's bartender at an old Long Island watering hole by the name of Yesterday's News. Today's news is Duke on top, eight to six. You look at the stat sheet, Duke, big advantage. Shots, shots on goals. They have not turned it over much, but Penn State has managed to keep this close. And we get a face-off violation on Penn State. That is their second of the half, so one more, and Duke will have a man up. You see the pace of this game, and I was in the Penn State huddle. Jeff Tambroni wants his offense to be patient. Duke is a deeper team. They're more talented, but the toughness and decision-making of Penn State can keep them in this game. And slowing it down a bit, and kind of countering the depth of the Blue Devils. Here's Chris Jordan. He'd been banged up a lot of this season. Again, shooting on his old teammate, William Helm from St. Lawrence. Now Malone, he's been quiet. Kenny Brower has a lot to do with it. And Caputo comes away with it after the cause turnover by 29 in white. Cart, for my money this year, Brower was the best defender in the ACC. Well, your money's good. It's really good, especially when you're buying. And Brower is a masterful technician. You watch his body control. He's never out of position. His footwork is impeccable. And look at his stick location, too. There's no exaggerated high choppy checks. They are precise, and he means business using that stick like a pitchfork, getting inside, not giving the attackman any space to breathe. Caputo against Hawes. Gray, his shot, or pass, picked off by Frassian. Outlet to Aldridge, Penn State can run. Aldridge, over to the wing, saved by Helm. Loose near the cage in the crease, interference, Duke ball. Zone D. Biggest area of improvement for Penn State this season, their defense. They've improved by three goals per game this year under new defensive coordinator Joe Bucci. Done amazing work. No Jack Posey though. Their top defender got hurt in the quarters. McAdory playing cat and mouse with Sweeney. McAdory denied top side. O'Neill's got the short stick. Fires and scores. A hat trick for Brennan O'Neill. Tenth hat trick of the season. 9 6. Starts with the defense. Tie him up. You get help off the carpet, and then the Kaiser 
William Helm, grad student, stays wide, sees it all the way. Nice rebound control by his mates. And stops mean more touches for Superman. Brennan O'Neill has been unguardable this NCAA tournament. And when you finally get him to the body, he hits you with that jump shot. So if 6'3", 225 isn't enough, then he wins the leverage game when he leaves his feet. Kark, you can see the level change. He's releasing that ball from, say, 8, 9, 10 feet. Frassian's got his eyes up and his body comes up, and then, boom, he yanks it down, and you see it buckles the goaltender. How do you play that, Q? I, I, that, I, I mean, <laughs> that says it all. Most of the time when guys jump, take jump shots, they do change levels. You rarely see a jump shot high to high shot. Penn State unsettled, Malone, doorstep, dunk! converted into a little numerical advantage. Beautiful pinpoint passing. A logistical symphony for the Lions. Quint, you've been to Jeff Tambroni's practices in the offseason. I have too when we're covering college football. A staple of that is ball movement and transition. And that was just beautiful offense. Penn State starting to close the gap on faceoffs. It's now 9 9. Two faceoff violations for Penn State, one for Duke. Trainer using the pick. Winkoff, who's got four assists, got run over. Matt Costin now. Over to Malone. Left hand three. That got a piece of helm, so it resets the shot clock. Shot clock resets to 60. If the offensive team gains possession after a shot on goal. Trainer looking for Winkoff. It's off his stick. Turnover for Penn State. It's a tough one to swallow. They have twice as many turnovers as Duke in this game. And when you're playing a team with the talent level of Duke and the depth in certain spots in the middle of the field, it's not what you want. Duke's D's been good in the NCAA tournament after a slow first half against Delaware. They stay in their man-to-man. -man. They don't want to slide to their poles. They've kind of put those guys on an island, but they'll su support their shorties, that is their defensive midfielders, and that's the group to me that has made the difference. Ledman looking for the hat trick. His shot snuffed out by Frassian. Low to low won't go, Anish. Low to low won't go. Talked about O'Neal's level change. That was the opposite. It was a low release to a low location. McVickers pass, batted down. Malone recovers. That stick checked away. Wilson Stevenson making the play for Duke. You mentioned Duke leaves its poles on an island. Well, they, they have three All-Americans. Uh, Wilson Stevenson, to me, is one of the great stories of this season. Where he, where he started his career, highly hyped, coming out of Connecticut. Love the way he played. A catastrophic injury that you referenced earlier, Anish. The time and effort he has had to put in, and we spent time with him yesterday. You look at his leg, it's like he got in a, in a car accident, quite honestly. The, the time and effort he has put in to get himself back on the field to an All-American caliber player. It's Eight incredible. surgeries. They almost feared amputation at one point. And he's not just an off-ball defender. A lot of people think he's an inside guy. He leads the team and calls turnovers. He's a cover guy as well. Unforced error by Duke as McAdory can't handle the Ledman pass. I, I tell you, our, our last two weeks in East, we spent time with the Army team. 
two weeks in a row we covered their games. You spent time yesterday with a guy like Wilson Stevenson. The strength of this sport are the student athletes. Th these are amazing young men who are going to do great things. I'll never forget, gentlemen, after that injury in the quarterfinals, the week between the quarterfinals and the final four, I went to visit him in the hospital, and he was not in a spot where anyone would want to be, but he was still smiling. He was so positive, and all he wanted to do was talk about his team. Happened in 2019, the injury did against Notre Dame. Winkoff has four helpers. Now Jordan. And Penn State gives it right back. 11 turnovers in the first half for the Big Ten. Number one seed. Important one minute to go here at halftime. To win big playoff games, you got to control and win the last minute of every period. Nittany Lions, the one seed in the Big Ten tournament. Here's Gray. And a timeout by the ACC Coach of the Year in 2023, John Donowski. Twenty nineteen, John Donowski holding up the phone as Wilson Stevenson FaceTimed his teammates in Philadelphia for championship weekend from the hospital. A young man that looked to former NFL quarterback Alex Smith for inspiration on his road to recovery. From a great family. I think he was born in Japan. The family spends a lot of time in Western Canada and British Columbia. Wilson, uh, uncommon maturity for a, for a college senior. You really, when you, when you speak with him, you speak... You feel like you're talking to a 35-year-old. This Duke defense today, they have caused five turnovers. Brower that time against the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year, T.J. Malone. A pair of lefties. You know, Brower's giving Malone some issues. He's getting to his body. I talked about Malone's speed being his special sauce, and Penn State has not been able to use picks to get Brower off the hands and hips of Malone. They need to, what we've seen in the past two weeks is, is getting Malone in space, using picks, and then Malone can use his speed. Bra Brower's just, he's in his face. And TJ Malone told us yesterday that part of what he wanted to do in the matchup was take Brower out to the perimeter. He said, if I go back behind the cage, I'm playing to the strength of 29 and white. Later today, Virginia and Duke. The Cavaliers have won two of the last three NCAA tournaments. They could potentially cement a dynasty this weekend. Notre Dame chasing that elusive first national championship. The Irish lost two games all season. Card both of them were against Virginia. You have Two players in the inside in 31, Tommy Schelling, two, Andrew McAdory starting on the crease. Both will roll off and end up behind in more of an open set here. Expecting man or zone. It looks like man right now. Man-to-man -man defense from Penn State, we'll see. No shot clock, 40 seconds to go, opening half. If O'Neill goes to the goal, 34 and white, he's got to be thinking the double's coming quickly. Now Penn State changes it up and they sit back in the zone D. 94 points on the season for Brennan O'Neill. Tops in the country. Make it 95 actually with four today. Charlie Balsamo against Sam Sweeney. It spins to McAdory, goal line extended. Now O'Neal, fighting his way through the defense, lost it. And Parnum gets it to Frassian. Half number one comes to an end. Penn State the underdog, hanging around, but Duke the one seed. With a two goal advantage, Brennan O'Neal, three goals, and a helper in the opening 30 minutes. Nittany Lions do a nice job of fighting through a screen that was set. 
and they collapse on O'Neal. Really good defensive strategy, spacing, and execution from Penn State. Cork. Coach, when a team shows zone and then shows man, how do you dictate tempo? Oh, uh, you got to play. You know, you still have to stay true to your fundamental tenets. You know, and you can still the zone is nothing more than a you know it, it's an adjacent sliding man-to-man -man defense. So you still have to dodge, draw two, move the ball, and you have to have good spacing behind those guys. When you have a superstar like Brendan O'Neill who has three goals in the first half, what are the rules when he has the ball? Uh, it's just like everyone else. You know, we want to be fundamentally sound. If he has the ball, we want to clear through for him. We want to show up for Jason, be outlets for him. But the rules are the same as they would be for anyone else. Thanks, Coach. 9-7, your halftime score in Philadelphia. Semifinal number one from Philadelphia to Bristol. Chris Cotter, Bill Tierney, Matt Ward in the studio. There is a lot of hardware on that set in Connecticut. Independence Hall in Philadelphia. Philly the site for the national semifinals. First time since 2019. Penn State with that large Philly alumni base hanging with the one seat. It's 9-7. Duke at the half and Ishraf Quitkas, Nick Paul Carcaterra. We'll hear from him in a moment. How has this game stayed close? Uh, it feels like every time that Duke has gone on a run, Penn State has answered. I think the face-off being even at 9-9 at nine, nine is what jumps at me most, and I think Jack Frassian's won the goaltending battle. Overall, I think Penn State would prefer a slower-tempoed second half. Brennan O'Neill, three goals and an assist in the opening half. Penn State does not have an answer for 34. Uh, nobody does. Uh, he's got the rare combination of skill and power at six foot three, 225 pounds. Remember, this is a junior who's gonna be playing for the senior national team, Team USA. I mean, that running jump shot on the run, left-handed change of levels is just lethal. Well, Penn State's gonna have a chance. It has to be with Jack Frassian, who's had some spectacular saves in that first half to give Penn State opportunities to come within one and two goals. But Winkoff from the midfield, I think, has been critical as well. Not as a scorer like we've seen him in prior weeks in the NCAA tournament, but as a passer. And I just spoke to Jeff Tambroni. He feels like the opportunities for his team right now are from the midfield. He said that TJ Malone's being guarded really well by Kenny Brower, so they have to initiate from the midfield with guys like Winkoff, and he feels like there's maybe an advantage attacking them from up top. I also asked him, in regards to defending Brendan O'Neill, would you ever shut him off? He said, that's probably too much of a sacrifice for our base defense, and we'd hurt in other spots if we did that. So nothing's out of the question, he said, but it's doubtful that they would play five on five and shut O'Neill. Yeah, and then that's what I talked to, Car talked to Coach about yesterday you lose your best defender jack posey what can you do in a week the tendency is to want to over coach it and, and coach is staying true to this team's identity and who they are defensively mullins wins the face off to begin the third quarter and that, penn state will go on the offensive first that's the shocker right now penn state is up i believe 10 to 9 in faceoffs. john danowski though telling us yesterday nay so someone who generally gets better as the game goes along Moore and Matt Trainer and Cost in the midfield for Penn State. Nittany Lions cough it up. There's Tyler Carpenter in transition. McAdory, Jake Caputo, one more. A little too much air on the pass. And Penn State comes away with it. That's Will Costin. That was the right look by Caputo. Somebody either got to his hands. In transition, Matt Costin now. That's Will's older brother. Both of these teams finish the rush, so to speak, in each with their short stick defensive midfielders or poles, guys like Tyler Carpenter. They go end to end. They don't run to the substitution box. Winkoff, there's that sweep back to the middle. He's got four assists. This time he'll shoot with the right hand and miss the cage. It stays with Penn State. Winkoff is like Kark. Uh, he's 99% right-handed. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, buddy. Well, there's the first one of the weekend. Matt Trainer now from the high wing. 
Jack Trainer. And McAdory caught on defense. And the trainer ended up in the key, in the crease. Wow. So it's Duke Ball. That was an opportunity missed. Karki, he's playing with a with a bum shoulder. Did you see that? Yeah, and you saw when he got up, he favored it right away. He he is hurting right now. You see him favoring his left side, his upper body, and to jump through the air when you know you're nicked up, it tells you what this game means to him. Being a senior, coming back home to the state of Pennsylvania for the final four, it's not an opportunity he was gonna miss. Trainer and Malone were two of the guys telling the rest of the team how important the first quarter was. 2019 semifinals, Penn State got blitzed by Yale in the opening quarter, never recovered. And the game was essentially won in the first 15 minutes. Ironically, this less experienced team handling the distractions, the hoopla of championship weekend better. Now Malone. Here's a chance for Mercer. Bouncer and Helm is there. This turf is not going to give you much. This grass has not yielded much bounce. It's a nice stop by Helm. Moving his feet. Good rebound control. There's Ledman, a defensive midfielder for most of his Duke career. Back on offense this year. And having the best season of his Blue Devils career. Third team All-American. Denenza now, the junior. Dumps it back, here's Balsamo. Shifty midfielder with speed. Ledman two tallies in the opening half. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Penn State in man-to-man -man defense. Balsamo against Hawes. Shoots on the run. And the goal is good. For Penn State, it's going to take all grit and guts. And Jack Trainer knows whether he's nicked up or not, he's got to be full sellout. Duke gets possession. And a fifth-year senior and trainer watches a true freshman in Balsamo go to work. I tell you, Charlie's got, he's got like a clutch aspect, a fearless aspect, a confidence aspect to his game as a freshman. Left-handed down the alleys, young man from Chaminade, tutored by Vinny Sombrato. Balsamo's got that mentality, the old-school Long Island mentality, dodge to the dirt. You mentioned Vinny Sombrato. Vinny played on four U.S. national teams after a standout career at Hofstra. That was his uncle. Scored that game-winning goal in the Dome in an overtime game against Syracuse. When he realizes that no slide is coming, he, he, gets, he gets to the inside. Kevin Parnham. Trying to stay with Brennan O'Neill. McAdory, that one saved. Will Costin keeps it in bounds to Penn State. He's the quickest guy on the field, too, in white. I mean, he is shot out of a cannon when he changes direction. Kark, these have been the pivot points in the game. Duke gets up 2-3. And right when you think maybe the Blue Devils are on the verge of putting it away, Penn State's had an answer every time. Because they have the leadership. Guys like Jack Trainer, TJ Malone, they were here as true freshmen, and Malone on a loaded offense was a critical piece to putting up record numbers. He was a 30-goal scorer as a freshman midfielder. And Malone tallies his third today. And on cue, Penn State with an answer. No wasted movement. Watch the efficiency. Little bit of a flop. Takes that one off the left shoe. And on the other side, TJ Malone. Experience with the bright lights, the big stage. Sets his feet here. And look at the release. 
as the slide comes, he still gets it off. And that's a tough thing as a shooter, Quint, because you're worried about getting your stick check because the slide was right in his face. But it's the way, the trajectory of that shot and the release that it wasn't too far away from his body allowed him to stick it. Malone yesterday described his Penn State career as a sandwich with great bread and expired meat. <laughs> He said championship weekend as a freshman in 2019, then injuries took a toll. You had the COVID year. He had two torn labrums and a sports hernia that required surgery. Initially, that injury was misdiagnosed as a groin pull. So in 2021, he didn't practice. He played in the games. He wasn't himself. Then he saw a hip specialist and they said, hey, this is more than a groin pull. Missed all of last year. He came back. Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year and his team at Championship Weekend. And his career arc kind of parallels Pat Spencer, former star for Loyal. He was a late bloomer out of high school. Five foot four as a 16 year old. Okay, he was headed to Amherst. And his coach at Haverford begged Jeff Tambroni, said, Take a look at him. And Tambo picked him up super late in the process. He was committed to Penn State after his senior year of high school. Chance here for Tommy Schelling, and Duke goes up three again. Schelling plays this perfectly. Watch 31 in the inside. A step here, a step there. Keeps him high enough in front of the crease not to lose his angle. And it's the faith in a ball movement offense, Quinn, that he knows he's going to get it. Watch 31 inside. A step here, a step there to stay high on the crease to keep that angle. No second slide, and you see Penn State's defense. After this ball goes in the net and they get together in their huddle, it's more like a, an autopsy report. What happened, guys? What happened? And all of a sudden, Duke's getting goals from multiple guys. Shelling's got two, Balsamo's got two, Ledman's got two, O'Neill's got, got three. At Kark, you see the value of Jake Naso staying out there on offense, getting the assist. A lot like Petey yes. LaSalla, which we'll see in game two for Virginia. They stay on the field, but also create a lot of five on fives. But Naso's a warrior like LaSalla. He's taken all but about 30 faceoffs the entire season. And ACC play took every single one other than two. Naso, a first team All American. Winkoff thought about it. Now has a short stick. A good one in Jack Gray, though. Winkoff down the alley. Plays it back to Malone. Malone with the right hand. Got a step on Brower. Back to back four goal games for TJ Malone. 11 9. You're talking about a pro level athlete. Picked up by the PLL Chaos. I think he's going to have a monster pro career because in space, when you get him some greenery, man, he makes people look silly. Yeah! He was 5'4 at one time, an underrated recruit. 45 minute drive every single day to the Haverford School up the road. Got to school about an hour early, played wall ball every single day. Pays off, the lefty sticks one's righty. Quinn, at the top of the broadcast, you said if Penn State can pull this off, Malone's got to match Brennan O'Neill. He's done that so far. And I love it, Haverford and East. Freshmen and sophomores against the wall. Juniors and seniors, you actually get to shoot on the goal. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta earn it. Naso wins the face off. Sweeney jones it loose. Penn State the other way. Quickly ahead to Winkoff. Five assists today for Winkoff. He had 13 all season entering a championship weekend. And here's the deal, big picture. The longer this game stays close, the more pressure and expectation weighs on Duke, the more lively this crowd, this pro Penn State crowd will be. Winner of this game to Monday's national championship against either Notre Dame or Virginia. 
Ethan Long. As Carpenter hung up, now Helm presses out of the cage. Malone scored the last three for Penn State. Over Mercer, low to high. Nittany Lions with a roar. They're within one. Hey, Quinn, nine of their ten goals are assisted. Everyone's eating. Everyone's sharing. Starts with a turnover and scrappy defense. Sweeney makes the check and then the run out. Mercy, mercy me. Penn State trying to etch their legacy this weekend in Philly. We will see many of today's stars playing one day in the PLL. But on a sunny day in Philadelphia, this Penn State offense is popping. And TJ Malone has been incredible. When I spoke to Jeff Tambroni at half, he said, we need to attack from up top. They hadn't had any success behind against guys like Kenny Brower. So they put Malone, their best playmaker this season, the Big Ten Player of the Year, above the goal. And he's sharing, he's scoring, and this offense, Quint, is clicking. Subtle adjustment at halftime to free him up a little from Kenny Brower, 29 and wide, who tied him up. And man, Malone's been involved in what? In the last four Penn State goals. Three goals, and he assisted on the last one. Ball ins into Naso in a tangled knot. It comes to Duke and to Jack Gray. Finally, now a possession for Duke. Brennan O'Neill, three goals. McAdory has the short stick, Sickler. Now the switch, and Ross will pick up Andrew McAdory. All three of Duke's attackmen garnered All-America honors. So did Garrett Ledman, who has the ball. Man-to-man -man defense from Penn State. Denenza to the cage. Rassia makes the save, the rebound to O'Neal, new 60-second shot clock for Duke. Penn State's leaving some guys on an island. Coach Tam Tambo told me yesterday, there's some guys we're not going to slide to. We've got to move and double and help out on O'Neal. But it looked like Denenza, they just left him completely on the island. Denenza against Aldridge. Top side, shot hits the crossbar. Big play right here. On the ricochet, big ground ball. And it's Balsamo out of the skirmish. Another shot clock reset, a new 60. Huge. And now this becomes an extra long defensive possession for Penn State. Enza again, on the run, pings the back of the net. Breathing room for Duke. I think he sensed it. I think 88 and White, Aiden Denenza, sensed that the defense wasn't giving him respect in terms of a double team. And he'll just sweep this one right-handed across the formation. Interference. It didn't look like Frassian never really saw it out of the pocket. He kind of guessed low, and that's a tough shot, Kark, because usually this is a yanker high to low to the far post. Instead, he puts it near side high. Yes, because goalies typically will take that step or two, knowing that guys offensively like to put it across their body. So if you can hit it near pipe, you're going to get a goalie like Frassian. Six different goal scorers for Duke. Naso off the face-off win. That's such a deceptive shot, Anish. It's a, it's a nuanced and, and subtle shot because so many players will crisscross that to the far post. And as a goalie, your, your weight shifts, you're thinking too much, you don't see the ball out of the pocket. Right. 
Here comes O'Neal. Stick checked loose by Parnum. Out of bounds, turnover, Penn State ball. Kevin Parnum, the sophomore from Pingree. Coached by Mike Webster, former teammate of mine, two-sport athlete at JHU. NCAA men's lacrosse coverage continues Monday with the national championship game. One Eastern on ESPN. For more info, visit NCAA.com. Winner of this game against the Notre Dame-Virginia winner. That's semifinal number two. Winkoff has been the facilitator. Five helpers. Malone's got a short stick matchup. There's the slide. Malone gets it to the wing. Duke recovers. Penn State has scored on its last three shots. Yeah! Make it four in a row. Hell, Neely should have had that one. A Matt Trainer goal. Nittany Lions back to within one. Parnum with the poke. Trainer from the wing. Little throwback. Able to reset his feet, Paul. The way that righty shooter, he could have shot that lefty, but he keeps it in the strength. But the resetting of the feet and the hips gives him just enough velocity to squeak this one past the goaltender. That was strange, though. It felt like Trainer almost halfway through the release wasn't positive if he should shoot that. You know, we're talking a lot about releases with Denenza shooting a near pipe. A lot of times as a shooter, the full follow through gets the stick across your body. In those last two shots, you didn't see that. Naso wins the faceoff for Duke. Accelerates downhill. Naso all the way! His sixth of the season. 13-11 Duke. Yesterday at practice, Naso's drilling on, on the side like all Fogos do. They're like kickers. I point to him and I ask John Danowski, what's most improved? He said, Jake has become a real lacrosse player. His handling, ground ball acumen, the passing, the understanding where the offense can be is that pegs our goal cam. Naso bags a key goal in this game. Seen that more and more now with face-off guys. Ever since the rule change a couple years ago, the players have to be A, more athletic, and way more skilled with the ball. Whether it's Naso, Petey LaSalle, those are the two top goal scorers in Sir. championship weekend from that position. Sir. The response by Duke came four seconds after the Penn State goal. Jordan now, 6'4", 220. His first game since early April against Ohio State. You can hear the goalie, William Helm. Carpenter jars it from Long. Long ambushed. Out of the melee, it's Tyler Carpenter for Duke.
Owen Caputo wheels back to his left. Duke bringing on a fresh body. It's Jaden Curry. Now shelling against Hawes. 15 to shoot. O'Neal, the pick man. Shelling on the rollback. Redodges, looking for Williams. And a good defensive stand by Penn State. Well, if you look at Penn State offensively, that last time they had the ball, they tried to attack from behind. Carpenter and Brower on a double team to no avail. When they keep the ball above the goal line and attack from the midfield, way more success. Trying to get a switch here, and they do. Malone now picked up by McGuire, the short stick. Penn State's best offensive player. Now Boyer meets Malone. Duke with the recovery. Final minute, quarter number three. Duke has led most of the way. Jack Trainer. Bum shoulder and all. Winkoff looking for Malone. Matt Trainer. It'll stay with Penn State. Morin, 14 on the shot clock, feeding the crease. Malone is there. Duke fell asleep. Five goals for TJ Malone. All you need is an opportunity when you have a hot hand like TJ Malone. Duke has an opportunity of their own with Tommy Schelling trying to through pass this. Had to be perfect to make it count to Williams. At the other end, we are restart ready. Naso wins this one back. And now Duke with a chance in the final 25 seconds of quarter number three. Every time Penn State gets it down to about one, it seems Duke is able to respond. Final 10 seconds, McAdory working on Ross. Help coming, McAdory sandwiched. And they're going to call him for withholding. Penn State with the ball, four and a half seconds to go. We go to the fourth quarter. A trip to Championship Monday on the line. Few gave Penn State a chance today. The Nittany Lions have made it a four-quarter game, down by one to the number one seed, the Duke Blue Devils. T.J. Malone. Big third quarter for he and the Nittany Lions. Five goals on the afternoon for the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. We go to the fourth quarter. Duke nursing a one-goal lead. The Blue Devils led 7-4 at one point. They led 9-6. Penn State has been chipping away, chipping away. But Duke still has a one-goal lead going to the fourth quarter. Kark? I'll tell you what, Anish, Jack Posey's not on the field with the injured leg. He has been an incredible emotional boost for this team. The entire game, up and down the sideline, cheering on the defense. He looked at me, he said, man in zone, man in zone. That's the switch they've been doing all game long. And Jeff Tambroni had the entire team. He said, we are way more connected defensively right now. And Quinn, you mentioned, during the break, I heard you talking about Brendan O'Neill a little quiet in that third quarter. And he was. Uh, but Posey is a great story, Clark, because success didn't come his way initially at Penn State. He 
as a freshman, four appearances, sophomore, five appearances. Even last year, he only made nine starts. A self-made player, he wakes up early in the morning and runs with TJ Malone, spends countless of hours against the wall working on his stick skills. He's hard-nosed, aggressive. He's been ruthless on the ball, and now all he can do is try to lead from the bench. In this tournament, both teams have been in this spot in the fourth quarter. Duke in round one got a scare against Delaware. They trailed at the half as the one seed eventually rallied and held off Delaware in the fourth quarter. Penn State in round one, down 7-1 to Princeton. Came back, actually led at the half, and then put Princeton away in the fourth quarter. Held off Army by a goal in the quarters. Ledman all the way to the cage, snakes around. There's Balsamo, two goals today, his first two of the NCAA tournament. Watts his left. That one wide. Duke keeps it in bounds, still plenty of time to shoot. McAdory. Denenza feeds inside, Dyson Williams misses. Big ground ball comes to Penn State. Nearly a turnover, Sweeney the other way. Ledman in pursuit, Sweeney. All the way, got a trailer. And Penn State will hold up. Nice transition defense by Duke. Ledman was this close to the trail check. Costin skirts down the alley. Behind the cage, drive, drive. Morton. Trainer setting the pick. Jack. Now here's Jack Trainer. Kenny Brower's got him. That is not the matchup for Penn State. Dumps it off to Morin against the shorty Jake Caputo. Winkoff can't catch it clean. Stevenson off the ground. Duke might have numbers. Frizzoli. Face down. The double face dodge, are you kidding me? Most D guys are trigger happy at that spot. It's a guy that just wants to make that extra move. But you watch for Zoli all season long. He's crafty with the stick. McAdory attacks from up top. Alert, alert! That would have been the viral play of the day, no doubt. Maybe the weekend. McAdory set behind the cage. Now it's Caputo. Did not have the angle, shoots it too high. Saying that's a pass, I guess. They called it a pass. It should be a pass. That thing had arc on it. Lorenzo Charles on line one. Penn State looking to tie the game. It has not been tied since it was 4-4. Malone's got a shorty. Had the man on the crease and long. Those two made a nice connection in round one multiple times instead of turnover. Malone has elite acceleration. Brennan O'Neill. Brennan O'Neill, 34 and white. Gotta be the guy somewhere down the line here if you're a Duke fan. O'Neill without a point in the second half. Here's Denenza. 
Fires low, Frassian there. A dozen saves for Frassian. And that's a cat and mouse here. They're slow to double team Denenza. 88 and White knows it. Sets up his rollback, but that's when Frassian can stop. Advantage defense. Kark, it's almost to pick your poison defensively for Penn State, and it seems they've made the decision to see if Denenza can beat them. It's the right decision, too, because when you don't slide to Denenza, you have a little bit of extra help defense ready to go on O'Neal, on McAdory. So it is pick your poison, but it's the right poison. Costin gets separation. Malone has a short stick matchup. Feeding inside, shot score! Penn State ties it at 13! T.J. Malone again in the middle of it. Morin, the finisher. Somebody's going to break in this game for Zoli. Whoop, whoop. Puts it just past the post. That's the fact, Jack. Frassian standing tall. How about the patience of TJ Malone? He knows he has the matchup. And the distribution of this Penn State offense to pass, to make the one more. 12 of the 13 goals assisted, and TJ Malone has been an absolute superstar this afternoon with the home crowd behind his back. TJ Malone as a freshman was an understudy in many ways to Grant Ament, the greatest player in Penn State history, whose passing skills were uncanny. Those two still talk multiple times a week, trading ideas on strategy, game planning, fundamentals. I control. What stands out to me is why did Duke have a shorty on Malone? I, I mean, matchup integrity. If you're Kenny Brower, 29 and white, I think you got to work a little harder. Or if he's up top, put the LSM, the long pole midi on him. Uh, you cannot cover TJ Malone with a short stick midfielder. First tie since it was 4 4 with 3.50 to go in the first quarter. Owen oh, Caputo. Finding carry for the goal, and Duke's bench jumps out. Jaden Carey has one goal on the season. This has to make you think of everything Coach Donowski tells us all season long. It's all about the second team, the looks they give us in practice. Well, those looks sometimes are so powerful that it gets you on the field in critical spots like this. Sometimes when you cover Duke lacrosse, you feel like a bird watcher because there are players who surface out of nowhere. Oh, look, there's 44 Jake Wilson. Oh, today it's Jaden Carey. Last week, guess who got in? Guess who got in? Reed Landon. I had a Reed Landon sighting. Well, here's a Jaden Carey sighting for all you bird watchers out there. And Kark, one of Duke's biggest strengths this weekend, it's their depth. It is. It's incredible when you think about the upgrade at short stick defensive midi using four high end guys. I mean, that's what Maryland did a season ago, and it propelled them to a national championship. All the talk was about their offense, but the depth at that short stick defensive midfield position. And when you could go deep into an offensive rotation with guys like Jaden Carey and Reed Landon. Carey was a guy who actually got some starts right at the beginning of the year in February. Grad student from Minnesota. Fifth year guy. Put in the time. Ledman working against Aldred. Skip pass, Balsamo. Over the wing, McAdory shot, no. This will stay with Duke, closest to the ball when it goes out of bounds on a shot. Awarded possession. Brilliant team offense. Ball reversal and a one more for a high percentage shot. And a new 60-second shot clock to work with. 
Penn State now. A little rope a dope. They're back in their zone. Check that back in their man. Here's O'Neal. Denenza with 20. O'Neal fakes it. No, it is zone now. Shot clock now, down to 10. Duke finally gets it inside. It's Dyson Williams, but they wave it off. He was in the crease. Huge, huge. Penn State has hit on six of its last seven shots. When seven has touched it in the second half, good things have happened. Warren plays it up top to Malone. Winkoff. Finds the angle and scores! Duke's best shooter, their most efficient closer, is Dyson Williams. Shoots around 50%. He's automatic. In spots like this, he's missed out two critical spots in this third quarter and in the fourth, Quint. Left foot on that goal line. That's a crease violation at the other end. Target is hit from a severe angle. Right-handed rip by Winkoff. City of underdogs, right? Villanova 1985 basketball. Rocky. Tug McGraw, you gotta believe. Jack Frassion at Penn State thinking upset. This would be a monumental upset. The Nittany Lions goalie, one of the best in the country, has made some big stops in this semifinal. He's got the mental flat line game that I love to see, dealing with a shot to the chest there in some pain. Sophomore from Annapolis, Maryland, 57% on the year. The more you watch him, the more you just got to love his instincts. So many times he makes the right choice on those 50-50 mid-range shots. No wasted movement or efficiency. And look at that differential. Big goalie disparity so far, Kark. Well, they got a solid Frassion, who's as cool as the other side of the pillow. And Quinn, I saw him at halftime. He came out earlier than normal, probably with 11 minutes on the clock to get the extra shots, and they weren't phasing him. Matt Donowski, the offensive coordinator for Duke, I was just in their huddle. He said they cannot stop us, whether they run zone, run man, and if they're in man, they're looking for some exchanges from the crease area to pop those guys on the outside. The hot guy, they're gonna move that guy around so their slides off for Penn State. Face-offs tilting in Duke's direction. They've won the last five. Yeah. Yeah. It's Jake Naso! Don't call him a Fogo. 15-14 Duke. A three-point afternoon for Naso. Two goals and an assist. Step down City. Look at him walk back to the dot. You talk about body language. Like, I'm the man. Look at him, look at him strut back to that dot. Look at him time this up, the catch. Crow hop, three quarter overhand bouncer. He actually gets this ball to hum, gets this ball to kick enough over the stick. Just a gorgeous shot from about 11 yards. Able to eye it up, follow through, celebrate to the bench. Second goal today, the 15th of his career. Hudson Bond and Naso. Penn State finally wins a draw. 
And they might turn it over. Aldridge able to salvage the possession. They've got to play it back. And Penn State has to get it across midfield before that shot clock hits 60. Frassia needs some help. And the Nittany Lions just able to get it across. Last lead for Penn State was at 4-3. More finds trainer. Can't get topside. Now Costin. Morin again on the invert. Feeds to Malone in front. Tied at 15. Six goals for TJ Malone. Mailman delivering on Saturday. So when Fogos score goals, what's their winning percentage on the next faceoff? Penn State nearly throwing this on the carpet for a turnover. Really well done and no panic. He's a chameleon, TJ okay. Malone. Put him anywhere on the offensive set. His freshman year, okay. he played inside, playing along with the Brits. Like Grant Amen feeding him the ball. This time he knows the slide is going to be early to support that short stick matchup. He stays pat and he finishes. Defenders have to work in tandem together. If you go, your second's got to be there. It's almost like you have to trade off the responsibility of T.J. Malone. Eight points for Malone. He had four goals in the quarters. Six points in round one. Naso wins another faceoff for Duke. It's the seventh tie of the game. Five minutes to go. Kark when these championship weekend matchups we're set in stone. A lot of folks pegged Notre Dame, Virginia to be a potential all-time semifinal. I don't know how many expected this game to go this way and be this close at this juncture. Especially when you lose Jack Posey and Jack Trainers nicked up. Your two heartbeats on both sides of the field. But TJ Malone wanted to hear nothing of that. O'Neal's been quiet in the second half. Ledman against the freshman O'Connor. Caputo working on Hawes, a very good shorty. Schelling able to track it down. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Ledman from up top, too high. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Less than four minutes to go in regulation. Ledman gets it back, three to shoot. Ledman trying to get that hand free. Too high, shot clock violation. This place loves the D. They love the D. on Penn State. Duke gets it back. That's a careless turnover. Duke found a way in round one when Delaware pushed the Blue Devils to the brink. Tired defense. They got to back it down now and they settle into their zone. Nenzu's been someone who has had opportunities today. O'Neal still waiting to check in in the second half on the stat sheet. He's inside the formation right now, but not for long. We come up on two and a half to go. Here's O'Neal. Gives it up, Denenza. 
Shot clock dips below 20. Denenza again. Aldridge stays with him. Balsamo now, two goals today. Over to Schelling. Schelling, not even close. And Penn State with the backup. Nittany Lions ball, 2.14 to go. The zone D and the great closeout from Aldridge. Penn State eyeing one of the biggest upsets of the semifinal round. Nittany Lions have two timeouts. Let's see if Jeff Tambroni decides to use one. Moran's been a weapon on the invert. He's got three assists. Moran pushed from the back, and Penn State has a man up coming. Push with possession, and the Nittany Lions have a chance with 90 seconds to go to take the lead. Bazaar White, number six. 30 second technical push. Easy call from the rear with extension. Then you see a broken shaft. A Nittany Lion group, 47% on the season. The Trainer Brothers, most lethal, but a 16 even on this unit with the shoulder injury. He's got the ball. Jack to his brother Matt Trainer. Back to Jack. Now Malone, six goals today. Trainer. Jack Trainer to Winkoff. Malone back to Winkoff, who scored the game winner the last two weeks. He's got some pop from up top. Winkoff likes to sweep across with the right hand. Thought about it. Two seconds left on the extra man. We go to full strength. Gray runs back on. Penn State now with 20 on the shot clock. Less than a minute to go. Can Winkoff close it again? Here's Malone. 10 to shoot. Matt Trainer has to put it on cage. Penn State with the backup, six seconds on the shot clock. Ethan Long. Penn State might have to dump this into the corner. One. Shot clock violation. Duke's gonna get a quick restart. Final 20 seconds. Duke has two timeouts. Penn State had two, didn't use any there. And John Donowski calls for time. 15.4 seconds to go. I know Clark's going to be listening in. Duke will try to win it in regulation. Penn State will try to hold and force overtime. First of two semifinal games here in Philadelphia. Blue Devils two wins away from their fourth national championship in program history. Penn State looking to get to Memorial Day for the first time in program history. This has been a close game throughout. Duke's biggest lead was three goals. Penn State clawed and clawed and clawed. Finally got to even. They've been trading goals. 15 all. The winner gets to Monday's title game against either Virginia and Notre Dame. And Quinn, if Penn State somehow pulls this off, this would go down as one of the bigger upsets on championship weekend. Penn State three and 11 last season. Uh, an incredible turnaround, one of the biggest in the sports history. And they have stood toe to toe with a Duke team who's had their eye on championship weekend. Karg, what are you hearing down on the sideline? There's 16 seconds left. Who would you give the ball to? 34. 34, but What's going to happen is he's going to carry the ball behind and they're going to set a pick and he's actually going to refuse the pick, meaning he will not continuously run through the pick. He'll come back to his strong left hand and try to get up through goal line extended. So there will be a carry. The pick will be set as if he was dodging with his right hand, but he will refuse that pick and come up to his left, his natural hand, 
and trying to score above goal line extended. Kark, what if Penn State sits in their 3-3 zone? There was one play, but I'll be honest with you, one way that you beat a zone, especially with 16 seconds left on a clock, you can go to the rack. One of the most overrated comments about a zone is you can't dodge it. You can dodge a zone. This looks like man in their alignment right now. We'll see if they stay with that. Parnum running with O'Neal, and O'Neal takes him to X. O'Neal trying to get to the left hand. Five seconds. O'Neal stumbling, spun to his right. O'Neal feeding left man who misses, and we go to overtime. That was some pass. That was some nifty pass. You talk about O'Neal willing to delegate, willing to draw the defense and kick it to his teammates. He's done that all year. He's been such an unselfish hero. And he gives Ledman a good look from about nine yards. And now the tension builds the type that locks the human throat next goal wins next goal sends the winning team to championship Monday catch your breath Philadelphia we've got overtime Duke won three national championships in the last decade. They last played for the national championship in 2018, losing to Yale. Penn State has never played in the championship game. Overtime rules, it comes down to this. The next goal ends the game. Both teams get one timeout, and now the face-off X becomes paramount. Jake Naso has been a weapon on the face-offs for Duke. 21 of 33, but he's also scored and created offense from those face-off wins. Two goals and an assist. Mullins out there for Penn State. Gotta be straight, boys. Gotta be straight. Down. Yes. Mullins topples over Naso. And out of the clouded wrath of the crowd, it's Jake Naso. Duke ball to begin overtime. Let's see if Duke elects to use its timeout. Penn State toward the end of the game had two timeouts, did not use any. They had the critical offsides penalty. Ledman. Two goals for Ledman. Working on Hawes. Man to man D from Penn State. Parnum up top trying to deny O'Neill. Ledman snakes around the crease. Inside roll! Ledman, if it's good, Duke wins! The Blue Devils win it! Garrett Ledman, the game winner! Duke will play for a national championship!
right foot? Was that right foot? Can I see that again? That right foot. Wow. He's not, he did not land in the goal mouth. But does that right foot step in the crease? Oh, that He's right on foot the crease. is in the crease. He is in the, the crease. The officials have left the field. The officials have made a beeline to the locker room. Penn State is now pointing up to the video monitors that they want a review of this. This play cannot be reviewed in college lacrosse. The issue is when you look at video replay, video replay, when it's used in lacrosse in the quarters at this level, it comes down to a clock issue, a timing issue. Did he beat the clock? A crease call is not something that you can review. Ledman's foot, and we looked at it a couple of times to make sure. Ledman's foot is in the crease yeah, two, before he releases the shot. And, and, and the angle, two things there. There's some shade cast by the players on the foot, on the line. May have been enough of an obstruction that the officials, who were in great position, missed the play. Frankly, we need replay review in those spots for overtime. We don't have it. Let's go down to Kark. Coach, most teams in that spot call a timeout. Why didn't you call one? Well, we were organized offensively, and we thought if we were going to lose possession, we needed to save possession. So that was, the, that was really the reason for it. Garrett Ledman scores the game-winning goal. He was a short-stick defensive midfielder a year ago. He wasn't on your top midfield line in the preseason. What was that moment like when you just hugged him? You know what? He missed the shot at regulation, and I told him to pick his head up because he's going to get another opportunity. Yeah, I didn't really think it was going to happen, but I said it anyway, and he did, and he made the play. You've been coaching a long time. When you're in a game like this, describe your emotions. It's it. Well, you got to really stay level-headed until the end. Penn State was awesome today. They were phenomenal. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. It's a bitter pill to swallow if you're Penn State. Ledman's foot was clearly in the crease. That is not a reviewable play per the replay review rules that the NCAA hands down. In the regular season, you don't have replay review, period. You get it in the quarters, you get it in the semis, you get it in the championship. But it all comes down to, you can only look at timing, you can look at clock issues. Did he beat the shot clock? Did he beat the clock at the end of a quarter? In that case, even though that is a call that decides the game, that is not reviewable. To me, that is not as much on the referees who've got to make a bang-bang call versus the format. Overtime, national semifinals, trip to a championship game on the line. That's something we've got to look at in the offseason. We need a replay review just to get that call right, given the stakes. 100%. The officials were in position. As I said earlier, there's a, there was a shadow cast when he stepped down. Was the vision of the officials obstructed by the defender? They just didn't get a good enough look at it. In pro lacrosse, the PLL, Premier Lacrosse League, that's a challengeable play. The coach can throw the flag and they review it and get the call right. It adds a stain on what was otherwise a highly entertaining national semifinal game. Kark, you're down with our Capital One player of the game. Garrett, when time expired in regulation, Brennan made that pass to you. You missed the shot. What was going through your mind? I just wanted to go to overtime, and I just wanted another chance. And luckily, Jake won the faceoff. We got the ball. And I knew we were going to take care of it. I knew that the ball was going to end on that side of the field, and we were going to win. Um, but yeah, it was uh, my, my stomach dropped when I missed that shot. You've been the ultimate weapon the last couple of years. You were a short stick defensive midfielder. You were a, a midfielder who could shoot on the run. But that last move, that wasn't typical for you. Describe what was going through your mind in terms of your approach on that defender. Yeah, like every day in practice, we, uh, we work on getting up to the island, five and five. And I knew that if I could get up there, that nobody was going to be home if I rolled underneath. And that's what I did. I put my foot in the ground, I go in front of the cage, and luckily it went. This is your fifth year. What makes that team behind you any different? Uh, it's just the most cohesive unit I've ever been a part of. Um, everybody truly loves each other. Everybody wants to be in the locker room. Um, we're excited that we get to play on Monday. 
but more than anything, we're just excited to be together. And that's been the story of this team, and that'll be the story till the end. Congratulations. Thanks, Carl. Playing like a senior, that is. Sense of urgency, energy, and great freedom today. Duke gets the win in overtime, 16-15 on the Garrett Ledman game winner. It's going to be talked about a lot. Duke will play in Monday's championship. The last three teams left are the only three teams that had the number one ranking during the regular season. It's Duke against either Virginia or Notre Dame. Duke was 2-0 against Virginia in the regular season. 0-1 against Notre Dame. The Blue Devils win. Controversy will certainly linger from the end of this. You don't want that for this sport on this stage when you have great lacrosse defined by a play like we saw end this game that can't be reviewed. It's something the Rules Committee needs to look at in the offseason. Listen, we've got another game though. Virginia and Notre Dame. Hopefully it can be as good as this one. To Chris Conner, Bill Tierney, and Matt Ward, we go back to Bristol.